All right, guys, today I'm going to be replacing a gearbox for my one of my slide outs on my open range. Okay, this is a 2014 uh, 310 bunkhouse open range. Now, I've had to replace this will be the sixth gearbox. Okay, the first four were replaced because they said the switches were bad and they went ahead and replaced them. Um, and that was one at a time, mind you. I mean, they all went out at separate times. Now, the fifth one went out. And that was on my dime, and it went out six months after the warranty went out on the travel trailer. I still contacted Open Range. I tried to get them to cover it, but they wouldn't. They said if it was two to three weeks, four weeks within the time of your uh, warranty going out, we would cover it. But being as far along as what mine was six months after, they, they said you're on your own, which kind of rubbed me wrong. I'm thinking, you guys know this is a problem. You should make this right. If you want a loyal customer for life, you make this right. But they didn't. I will probably never ever own another travel trailer with a cable system because it's guaranteed to fail. Your cables are either going to break, they're going to stretch, something's going to go wrong, and uh, and then you got your your gearbox. So, anyway, I paid $120, I believe it was, for the last gearbox, and then I paid a place just right down the road here, uh, $310 or $15 to install it, which. I'm a type of person, I try to fix everything on my own. My motto is this, if it's man-made, it can be fixed or replaced. So if it's already broken, I, all I can do is tear it up more. And there's somebody that makes a good living repairing what's already broke or what I've made worse. So I'm gonna give it a shot 99% of the time. So I did my homework on this. I've called three different service places, talked to their technicians, found out everything I need to know to do this on my own. Hopefully it'll turn out great, and if not, I'll be having one of them visit me to fix whatever it is I mess up. We're going to give this a shot. So, there. Oh, one thing on the gearboxes. The last gearbox I bought, they said make sure it has a grease zerk on it. Okay, so you can put grease to it. That's our strongest model. It's the best one ever. So when I got my new one in the other day, it didn't have a grease zerk on it. So I'm thinking, man, are they trying to sell old stock just to get rid of it? Surely not. So I called Open Range, talked to their tech department. They said no. They had to get rid of the grease zerk because people were packing them full of grease and it was creating all kinds of problems. So if you buy a gearbox, make sure that it starts with the number 170 or greater. So it could be 170, 171, 172. That's how they're going to number the generations. 170 was supposed to be their newest and strongest model. So I hope that helps. So let's get started on what we've got to do to make this slide out work. Okay, the first thing is you can tell that this slide out is about 50% in, okay? And the reason you want this 50% in is put some of the weight over the trailer and some is now hanging off the trailer. That's one. Number two, with this slide out, I'm going to have to take this crown molding off the top. And that'll give me some room to get behind here with hammers and stuff and knock some of that, that loose with a rubber mallet. The, um, the other thing is this ceiling part will actually work as a workbench once I get in there and I'm able to get access to the gearbox that I can set all my tools up there okay now the thing that you want to do which this kind of I wasn't prepared for them to tell me this but you still want to support that slide out from the outside I'm thinking the slide out should be supporting itself but their main thing is not so much the weight it's that they don't want it to shift left or right or in or out or anything because that makes lining everything back up more tricky later on. So, let me walk outside. Let me show you exactly what I've done with some jack stands and jacks, just so you know. Okay? Okay, so as you can see, this is just an old Jeep jack. And I've got it just up against this, just snug enough um, that, it's, that it's not... I mean, it's got like... It lifted it like a quarter of an inch, okay? I set my gloves under there so I wouldn't forget them. On the other side, it's just a floor jack with a piece of 4x4, four four, and it just lifted it, like I said, a quarter of an inch just to take a little bit of weight, just put a little bit of weight on it just to kind of work as a support, not so much to do any lifting, but just to keep this thing from shifting. So they said they'd strongly advise doing that, so just find some way to kind of take a little bit of the weight off of this slide out okay so let's go back inside hey i wanted to share one more thing with you i've come up with a great way to mount reverse lights on the bumper of your travel trailer they're little bitty they're super bright and i did it all for under 50 bucks and i'm going to make a video on how i did that because to me the worst thing about camping in winter time is having to back your trailer into a spot that is pitch black and you've seen it i've seen it husband and wife's out there trying to 
communicate with flashlights and it can turn ugly. Well, this eliminates all that because it lights up everything. So if that's something that interests you, just please like my Facebook page, Southern Trace Camping, or my YouTube page, same name. I'm going to put that video out here shortly. I also came up with a bracket system that clamps to your uh, lifting jack that lifts your ball, that lifts your trailer off the ball of your truck that you can put a flagpole in. Um, and you can do it for under $15. So anyway, I'm going to be putting those videos out soon. If that's something that you might be remotely interested in, just go ahead and like my page. Anyway, let's tackle this gearbox. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and apologize. You might hear some fan noises. I had to turn some fans on blowing in here because it's, it's pretty warm already. So anyway, the first thing we're going to do is we've got to take off this piece of trim right here. Okay, and I started a little bit earlier. And I just took my fingers and just started prying it. And as you can see, I've already got it fairly loose, but I didn't loosen it on this end just yet. So I'm just using my fingers and slightly pulling. Now this is glued and it's nailed. So it takes a little bit of pressure, but not much. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have to remove these square pieces or not, but I'm hoping that I don't have to. Okay, so I've got that, I've got that off of there. Now one thing that I was warned about was when you're doing this, you keep an eye on this glue line, which I was while I was doing this earlier. If it starts to, to peel the paper back, you take a razor blade and slice it so that it doesn't peel this paper all the way up. Okay, so we've got this off of there now, which you can see it looks like they probably use liquid nails or something of that nature, okay? So now we've got these little bitty screw holes that are, or little bitty screws that are in here that are holding this whole head headboard on there, this whole uh, crown molding. You can kind of see maybe right there, it's really bright in here. But we've got, it looks like one, two, probably gonna be about six of these across, okay? So let me set this back up here. Or maybe we can still see it a little bit. All right, so let me get my drill right quick and I'll undo these. Now, one of these screw heads is sticking out right here, which means I'm probably gonna have to knock this square loose. A little bit um, I was hoping not to have to mess with these corner pieces but it looks like I'm gonna have to knock it out just so I can get to these right here all right so let me get let me get these loose real quick okay so right now I have almost all the screws out except for that one because it is behind here so I'm gonna try knocking this out with a rubber mallet and maybe I can get it far enough where I don't have to totally undo it if so I'll just have to finish nail it back up there now you can see this glue line that's up here, and you can see there's one more screw there. I left one in the middle uh, that I'm going to get next. Now, when I took that off of there, I don't know if you can see that little bitty finishing nail. There was a bunch of these sticking out like that. So I went ahead and pulled those with pliers because they're just going to nonstop stab me. So anyway, I've taken all these screws out all the way down. And that's what you do once you get the finishing, once you get the trim piece off. Then you, this whole section, as you can see, if I move it right here, I mean, it's it'll it'll should come off. I shouldn't have to take this square off, but I think I'm going to have to take this end square off on this side. So let's see what happens real quick. Okay, so I knocked this loose with a rubber mallet just enough to where I should be able to get to this screw. And I'm going to have to get the glue out of that with a razor blade. But one thing I've noticed, when you start moving this stuff around, it's wanting to pull this end piece out. You can see it better on this. So you're going to have to be a little bit careful. And all this is just finishing screws. I mean, it can all be covered back up. So it's not the end of the world. This is just a necessity to get to where you need to get. And we'll just use a finishing nailer to put it all back together if we have to. So let me go ahead and get those last screws Well, out. it turns out this square on this end had to go ahead and be knocked off. I had to take that piece of square crown molding off of there. I just couldn't get to the screw that I needed to. And they said that that was a pretty good chance that both of those squares were gonna have to come off. This side I was able to keep on, the other side I wasn't. Well, now you can see we have complete access to the gearbox. So I'm gonna mark everything the way that they told me to. And then I'm going to come back to you and show you exactly what I've done and the steps we need to take to get the gearbox off. Okay, so here's what I've done. I've used whiteout um, to mark my bolts and right where they're at so I know how much thread is on each one. And I did it right up tight. So what I've got to do is I've got to loosen uh, some of these bolts on each end. I've done this on both ends. Now here, 
on the gearbox itself, I marked wide out on the two pieces of chain that should be facing straight out whenever I put the new gearbox on. The only thing holding the gearbox on are that nut and that nut. Those are carriage bolts that go through the steel plate up here on the top. So once we get these chains loose, now all I gotta do is loosen them enough to be able to pull the chains off of the gears, okay? Which the bottom one will probably have to have more slack because it's gotta, it's gotta rise up over both of those. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and start on that end down there and loosen that one enough so that I can drop, so that I can drop that top chain off first. So let's see what happens when I loosen this okay. up. So I have backed all these way off to where there's a lot of slack. And I even took out the number three right there. And it's, it's hanging just right there. I wrote number three because it's the third hole down. And I've got quite a bit of slack, but I still am having trouble getting the chain off because there's still just not quite enough slack. So what I think I've got to do is it's in this thing here. I went ahead and backed this nut off. This is just a jam nut. And I'm going to loosen this. And again, I put white out on the thread so I can see how far this way that I loosen it. And I think, I think it should only take just a little bit, but we will find out and I'll let you know how it works. Okay, so basically I loosened all those on that end. And what I learned is I don't think you'll actually have to take out number three. All you have to do is get them super loose and then go ahead and use your 11 millimeter end wrench to back this all the way out and then I mean once you get it about four turns loose you can finger do it um, so that's going to be what it takes to get to get these um, chains off there's just you can't flex this chain enough even with all that slack on the cable there's these teeth are pretty stick out pretty far in here so you just can't quite get them uh, to do what you need them to do so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off of there and see what happens. There you go, there's the first one off. Now we get to deal with this second one. So basically what I'm gonna do is loosen all of them to where they're barely holding threads and then I will back this off. This is just a jam nut, which I think, as I recall, one of these was only finger tied anyway. So we are learning as we go. Here we go. So here's one more thing that I've figured out that makes it easy. Once you get about eight or ten revolutions turned uh, to loosen these things, you can actually push with your pliers, your vice grips. You grab them and push towards the wall, and then you can, with your other hand, finger loosen these. That's how loose they'll get that quick. So that's just a little pointer also that might save you a little bit of time just doing them. I mean, you can see now, I mean, you can see them going in and out. So once they're that loose, you can do them by hand and it's, it's just much easier. Okay, so the thing you wanna do is once you have all these loose, you can see how much I've backed all these off. This one I didn't back off a ton, but there's still so much slack. Is you wanna go ahead and back this jam nut off right here and then just totally take this nut off of there. So this pulley, just set it straight, just set it straight down um, right here. And then you should have all the slack that you need to go ahead and get this removed. So you're gonna wanna back that jam nut off and then go ahead and add some more of the white out to that area right there. Just so you can see exactly where that thing needs to be when it comes back. Don't you love white out when it's all stringy? Anyway, you wanna put that, that white out right in there so that you know when you go to put this piece, when you're tightening it back up, you'll know that this edge right up here will go right up to where the whiteout starts and that's when you know you've got it set back perfectly. Okay, so we've got both of the pulleys pulled loose and both of the chains are now free from the gearbox. So all I'm going to do is take those two bottom nuts off right there and there and then take this gearbox loose and put the new gearbox on and then re-thread everything. So let's get that done. Just taking these nuts off the bottom of the gearbox. Gotta get them loose. Gearbox should. Uh, we'll have to take the bolts out because that 
little hole right there is going to thread onto that coming out of the motor okay so you're gonna have to thread it just slides on it's just square hole square hole so that's the old gearbox now if you will notice like I said on this new gearbox it has a number of 170 starting with 170 I hope you can see that maybe a little bit better right there okay all right so now let's put this on there shouldn't be too tough famous last words uh, I'm gonna line that up. We are going to slide that on there. Like the champ. This was the chain that's gonna go on the bottom, but we can't do that yet. We gotta put our bolts in and get everything lined up. Like I said, these are carriage bolts, so they lock into the plate. So that you don't have to uh, try to hold it with a socket or anything, an end wrench or anything. Alright, so it's on there. I'm going to get nuts put on the bottoms of these. Like so. You know, there's always that moment where you... I was just nervous about taking these off and hadn't done it before. And I kept telling myself, well... I can always call someone to come fix it if I screw it up, but you really don't want to screw it up. I don't think, I mean really, I think if I had to do this again if it turns out right, I really think I could probably do this all in about an hour. This time, I was just going extra slow and double thinking everything, triple thinking everything, just trying to make sure that I didn't, didn't tear anything up. So, that is set. So as you recall, I had this white spot. The white, the, the white, um, I had the white, uh, my mind just went blank, my white out. And that's pretty close to the front facing straight forward where I had it before. So, now what we're going to do is lead on down like this, scoop my stool down, okay, this is the old gearbox, let's get it out of the way, and we're going to put this pulley system, we're going to just put the rod back into the pulley system like we had it. Okay, we put this nut. Big old long nut in there. And then we go to tighten it right back to where we had it. Now the key is you want this to be you want this to be level. I mean, you want it to be, you don't want to have, you know, your wires twisted up or anything like that. You just want to make sure they're flowing down through it like they're supposed to be. And all we're going to do is just tighten this up all the way until this flange hits the white out. All right. Okay, so the right side is back together. You can see I tightened everything up to just to the point where it started touching the, the uh, white out. Same thing on here. The only thing I have left on this is to just go ahead and tighten that jam nut back down. So that it's so that it's holding and that'll be a little bit tougher than finger tight probably because of the whiteout then i just do the same thing to that side put it all back together uh and then we go take the jacks off and give it a test try so that's what we're going to do next okay so the side i thought was going to be easiest the top i'm having a little issue with and it's not too big of an issue it's just that the white the whiteout on my link that i wanted to make sure lined up with this one i can't i can't get it to to its proper spot it's off by about a link and a half so there is a second pulley on the inside okay and there's this plastic guard that keeps everything separated so what I've done is I did just what I did on the other side I went in and put the white out and then I'm gonna back this off and give me a lot of slack to line the chain up 
And once I get the chain all lined up, then I'll go back in here and tighten it back down with this. Um, so it's gonna be a combination of going between this pulley and the one on the outside, tightening, tightening them up back and forth to get the chain right where it needed to set again. Isn't a big deal, just wanted to make you aware that there are two of these pulleys on each side, one on each side of the black divider. But you just kind of got to make sure you have everything marked and get everything back to where it was. And sometimes that means adjusting a little here and adjusting a little there. Not a big deal. All right, everything is lined back up. All of the uh, whiteout is touching where it was. The only thing that is slightly off that has me a hair concerned is these two did not quite perfectly line back up. I could not get them to line up, so we're still going to test it and see what happens. I'm going to go out, take the jacks off, and see what happens whenever we go in and out with okay, it. Okay, here goes the moment of truth. Slide out going in, working like a champ. Everything I did came out right, saved $300. Now the one thing that I've noticed that I need to contact them on, it's got me a little bit a little bit concerned was one of my cables never did tighten up and let me show you what I mean I put it right back where it was but this number four I'm gonna call it number four cable on the right hand side is super loose I mean you can push it out and it has slack I'm guessing that's not supposed to be that way but I put it right back where the marks were so slide out is working I don't know if I should tighten that or not I'll call them and, and find out because that's something I can reach even with the crown molding on I can reach behind there and, and tighten that up all right so this morning I went ahead and called this service department at the dealership to find out about that slack in that fourth cable and they said that the amount of slack that I had is just fine that it different times depending on where your slide out is located how far in or how far out there's going to be slack in different spots in your uh, in your cables so he said as long as it's not greater than about an inch that's what they have the leeway for that I should be fine so I went ahead last night and checked my middle slide out I put it almost in the exact same position about 90% out and it also in the very same cable the fourth cable down on the right hand side had about a half to three quarter inch slack now the one thing you don't want to do is see that slack and think man I need to tighten that because he said if you tighten up and take out all the slack to where everything's snug, you will have problems with the cables fighting each other and you're going to start breaking cables or more gearboxes. So leave a little bit of slack. Put everything back just the way you found it. He said that there are stainless steel cables that are max stretched before they ever have the ends put on it. So the cables shouldn't stretch. So put everything back the exact way that you found it and you should be good to go. As always, guys, I hope this video helped you. Um, I'm about to show real quick the inside of a gearbox because I thought it was interesting to find out why these things are failing. So as always, guys, have fun on your trips. Be careful out there, and I hope this video helped. God bless. Okay, so I have figured out what exactly is causing these gearboxes to fail. It is in the housing. This is just an aluminum housing. And what you have, you'll see right here, that is broken. That's where a gear sits, and this is where the top part of the gear sits. So this is the gear that we're having the issue with, okay? This gear sits down in that hole like that. This is your worm gear that puts torque onto that, which sends it over to this gear. So what's happening is this gear is getting tilted, and it's tilting this way. And how do I know that? Because it busted it out that way, and this is the top piece, and that hole is egg-shaped. So what's happening is as it torques, it's turning it. All right, like that. And well, now you're not getting a flush fit on your gears. It's it's getting a, a an angled fit. So what it's doing is it's rubbing the it's rubbing the gears uh, thin. So and you're only grabbing just a part of the gear. It's designed to grab all those teeth at the same time. So it's 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 basically just getting about 40% of the the grab that it needs, and then it spins them apart. It spins them apart, and then you wind up getting spots like that right I don't know if you can see that right, right there that that uh, break away and then that's when you start getting your popping noise you can tell how much this thing tilts in there because right here on this housing you can see where it has been rubbing the actual housing that gear should not be able to tilt that much but 
the housing is actually the weakest link in this. I don't believe it to be the gears. So anyway, I thought that was kind of interesting.